Good morning. Hope you're feeling good on this morning. Welcome to Tea Time with Ilana. Uh, I just wanted to elaborate a little bit more on the double-minded man. Uh, <clears throat> let me come around and introduce myself or show myself first. And then we'll get started. I didn't go low enough into the camera so that you can actually see my face. So hopefully this time my face gets in the camera just a little bit better. All right, so now, as I was saying, <clears throat> I wanted to elaborate a little bit more on the double-minded man. So I'm going to start at James 1 and 6. And I'm going to say, let's say, let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. <clears throat> Which means you have no anchorage. You're easily knocked off your pedestal, a double-minded man. Uh, I further looked into the definition of a double-minded man. And I found the Greek word dipsuchos. It is meaning two minds and two souls. Okay? Which you can't serve two masters. So if you're a double-minded man, that means that you own two minds and two souls. So that means you're trying to worship God, the true and living one, and you're trying to worship Satan. And you can't do that. A double-minded man is easily tossed, like I just read in 1 and 6. So now, if you're committing certain abominations, uh... And then you want to continue to uh, go to church and say that you're a man of God and that you're worshiping God. And, uh, you're a double-minded man. So uh, I looked up the definition of abomination. And they are things that are vile, vicious, or terrible. French meaning repugnance. Horror, disgust, uh, abomination can refer to a person or object that is loathsome and repellent. So, that is the definition of abomination. Okay? <clears throat> And I'm just going to go into a few abominations so that we can be clear on what an abomination is. Okay? So we know that abominations are vile, vicious, uh, can be uh, an object or person that is repellent, repugnant, disgusting. We know what abominations are. Like the most disgusting thing that you can do. And we are committing them. We are committing them. I have to put myself in there too. I am so far from perfect. Everybody like, oh, you think you're perfect? You trying to judge me? No, I'm just trying to live for God. And in the process of trying to live for God, <clears throat> Uh, I try to be these persons that I discuss. So I'm going to Leviticus 18, 4, and I'm going to read 4 through 23. So now, let's see. Ye shall do my judgments and keep my ordinance. 
to walk therein. I am the Lord your God. So these are the things that 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 we get judged against us in our dying day. These are his judgments. This is this is what he's judging against us. These things. And it's a lake of fire. It's a lake of fire waiting for you when you don't do these things. And don't get mad at me because I didn't write the book. Okay? So now. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments. Which if a man do, he shall live in them. I am the Lord. So if you if you do the things that 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 God say do, you really do have a more abundant life. You know, uh, you, you be amazed at how easy it is to live for the Lord. People think it's difficult to live for the Lord. That's that's the adversary telling you that though. None of you shall approach to any that is near of kin to him to uncover their nakedness. I am the Lord. The nakedness of thy father or the nakedness of thy brother shall thou not uncover. She is thy mother. Thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. The nakedness of thy father's wife shall thou not uncover. It is thy father's nakedness. The nakedness of thy sister, the daughter of thy father or daughter of thy mother, whether she is born at home or uh, born abroad, even their nakedness thou shalt not uncover. The nakedness of thy son's daughter or of thy daughter's daughter, even their nakedness thou shalt not uncover, for there is thine own nakedness. The nakedness of thy father's wife's daughter, begotten of thy father, she is thy sister. Thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy father's sister. She is the father's near kinswoman. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy mother's sister. She is the mother's near kinswoman. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy father's brother. Thou shalt not approach to his wife. She is thine aunt. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy daughter-in-law. She is the father's, she is, excuse me. She is the thy son's wife. Thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy brother's wife. It is thy brother's nakedness. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of a woman and her daughter. Neither shalt thou take her son's daughter or her daughter's daughter to uncover her nakedness. Now, 16 up there at the top. Uh, this is why uh, the queen at that time wanted John the Baptist's head. Because she had left her own husband. She did both, 16 and 17. She she left her own husband and went to his brother. And John the Baptist called her out about it. And so uh she thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy brother's wife. It is thy brother's nakedness. So they committed that one and John the Baptist called him out on it. And so then she wanted John the Baptist's head. So she let her daughter do this little erotic dance for him. Uh, for, the, for, for, the, for the king. Uh, ain't no telling. She was probably half naked. Jumping and gyrating and carrying on. And he was loving it. And uh, she let her daughter do the dance for him. So that she could ask for John the Baptist's head. So now, I'll just start from 17 again. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of a woman and her daughter. Neither shalt thou take her son's daughter or her daughter's daughter to uncover her nakedness. For they are her, her near kinswoman. It is wickedness. It's wicked. Wicked. It is a lake of fire waiting. Neither shalt thou take a wife to, to her sister. To vex her, to uncover her nakedness. Beside, 
the other in her lifetime. Also, thou shalt not approach unto a woman to uncover her nakedness as long as she is put apart for her uncleanness. Moreover, thou shalt not lie carnally with thy neighbor's wife to defile thyself with her. And thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Moloch, neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God. I am the Lord. I mean, quit giving your children up to sacrifices, blood sacrifices. A lot of celebrities do that. They they, they want that celebrity and that fame, and <clears throat> they'll do anything to get it. Kanye sacrificed his mama, you know. Uh, but it was once upon a time, it was actually people that were giving up their children to blood sacrifices. Sometimes, who knows? Who knows? Uh, I heard something about Prince had a baby that didn't nobody hardly know nothing about. Might have gave that one up for a blood sacrifice. We don't know what's going on. You know they got their secret societies. And the last one, <clears throat> or well, next to last one. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. I mean, don't man shouldn't be laying with man and woman shouldn't be laying with woman. It's an abomination. And we talked about what an abomination is. It is foul. It is vicious. It is terrible. It is repugnant. It is horrifying. It's disgusting. The Lord despises these things. It is an abomination. Woman shouldn't be laying with woman. Neither shall thy, I'm sorry, neither shall thou lie with any, my writing in this book is kind of small, sorry. Neither shall thy lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down there too. It is confusion. Satan is the master of confusion. He loves confusion. A woman shouldn't be laying down with a horse, but you know, you know, everybody done seen it on the porn. You know, don't let everybody not act brand new. You know, where you see the woman laying with the stallion horse and stuff like that. And you know, if you don't get your mind right, you know, here you are in this state of confusion. Don't even know how you got there. That's because you've been looking at some bull crap. All right, so now, ye shall therefore, I'm on 26, 18 and 26, ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments and shall not commit any of these other abominations, neither any of your own nation nor any stranger that sojourneth among you. So that means nobody, nobody. If you're supposed to be on my team and you're supposed to call yourself a child of God, these are not things that you are supposed to be doing. This is not how you're supposed to be conducting yourself, okay? And then you stand in judgment for these things. So you might be enjoying it now. Laugh now. Cry later. As my good friend would tell me, the yin-yang, the Gemini effect. All right, now, I'm going to go to Proverbs 6, and we're just going to discuss a few more, and then I want to go into the Ten Commandments, see, because this is how you keep from these things. Ten, ten little commandments. I already named off about, <laughs> I don't already named off about. 13, I'll just say 13 abominations that you can do against the Lord. And I still got about six more. And all you got to do is live by these 10 commandments. Which people say, oh, we're not under, we're not under uh, 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 law anymore. We're under mercy and grace. And that's where it can get kind of tricky, you know. 
But because we up under mercy and grace, we're going to take for granted. I mean, these things are still judgment. You know, you still judged against these things. I mean, you got to tighten up. I mean, we got mercy and grace. I mean, you ain't got to die as soon as you do them no more. See, back in the day, you go have to go in the temple of holy and holies and you have to go to the Sakat and live in these little huts that hurricane weather. You got this little strong hut you were staying in. And if your hut didn't stand, you didn't stand. And you might have died out there that day. You got passed in judgment immediately. With mercy and grace, we get to repent and ask for forgiveness and ask the Lord to forgive us. See, that's what people are getting it twisted at. See, you get to live now. Back then, you had to go ahead and die right quick. All right, so now let me go into 6, 6, 19. All right, so now 16 and 19. It's just a few more. These things doth the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed into and shed innocent blood. A heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift and run into mischief. A false witness that speak lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. A troublemaker. Somebody always keeping up some stuff. So now, <clears throat> these are abominations. These are abominations. People who like to lie. People killing people for no reason at all. You know, uh, talking about depopulation. You go ahead and depopulate. You the one gonna stand in judgment for it. Depopulation, really? Where the Lord say be fruitful and multiply. So if he telling you to do something, then you know he gonna take care of your needs. He ain't gonna tell you to do nothing for not. He gonna feed you. He gonna make sure you're good, you're good and fed. You got somewhere to sleep and lay your head. My God is awesome, baby. Awesome. So you 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 can't you can't get with this program. You can, how can somebody get with the program of shedding innocent blood? It's an abomination, and we already talked about what the about the definition of an abomination is. So I'm not going to go there again. All right. So now <clears throat> I'm going to read uh, 19 and 20 to you also because this is how you keep from these things. A false witness that speaketh. Oh, I'm sorry, my son. Keep thy father's commandments and forsake not the law of thy mother. Okay. No, 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 no. Sorry, that's not what I wanted to read. Okay, that's right. That is what I want to read. Okay, so. My son, keep thy father's commandment and forsake not the law of thy mother. Bind them continually upon thine heart and tie them about thy neck. Okay? So, keep the commandments. So, I'm just going to give a refresher <clears throat> on what those commandments are. He said, tie them about your neck. Keep them with you at all times. This is how you keep from these things. This is how you keep from them. If they're around your neck, your neck with you at all times. It, or it could be a reference to uh, your neck attached to your head. You know, so keep it on your mind constantly. Who knows? But he used the term tied around your neck. Like you wear a necklace or a choker. Alright, so then I'm going to go to Exodus chapter 20 and we're just going to discuss the 10 commandments just a refresher and i'll be finished and god spake all these words saying i am the lord thy god which have bought thee out of the land of egypt out of the house of bondage thou shall have no other gods before me 
I'm the one and the only. Ain't no other gods. You see, they want to say it's gods. They got gods. God is not plural. It's God. See, whenever we say, Lord, I am the Lord thy God, it ain't no other God with that. It's just him. See, when we talk about those demigods, it's a bunch of them. They have to have that S on it. It's plural. That's when you know you're dealing with the wrong thing. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. So that means all these wood carvings and all of these statues and all of this. It's just... It's not what he wants. The golden calf. He got so upset about that calf they molded. Now he just escaped. They, they just come across the Red Sea. They saw the water stand up and they walked across that Red Sea on dry land. He just watched the water stand up. And they still went right into their foolishness. That's the power of the adversary. Because what he gives you is quick. What he gives you is easy. So you got to be patient when you're working with the Lord. You got to stand in faith and, and learn patience. <clears throat> I read that the other day when I was talking about in James, you know, he said, let, let, your, let, let, let patience be perfect in you. You got to know how to be patient. All right. So now where was I? I'm on 20 and 5. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For the Lord thy God am a jealous God, visiting the inequity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. He show mercy unto us that be trying. That's all we doing is trying. Far from perfect. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless for uh, uh, that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day. To keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord, thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. That seventh day. That seventh day. I found out that seventh day is cold. That seventh day, you rest. That seventh year, you rest. You know, and we couldn't even follow simple commandments like rest. Because the adversary said, uh-uh, 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 you got to get out there and work that field. You know that corn not going to grow if you don't get out there. Them beans ain't going to come up. What are you doing? Resting. Satan don't like you to rest. I likes my rest. <laughs> don't mean no harm. Now, I don't know if rest means sleep. Sleep is a fleshly desire, so yeah, it might mean sleep. But I always hear just rest. Well, I have to look up the definition of what rest is. I mean, I'd be like, can I just sit down right here and just rest a minute, you know? So you don't necessarily have to be asleep to be resting. All right, so now let's see. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord. This thy God, in it thou shalt not do any work, thou shalt shall do any work that thou nor thy son nor thy daughter thy manservant nor thy maidservant nor thy cattle nor thy stranger that is within thy gates for in six days the lord made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them, that is in them and rested the seventh day Wherefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hollowed it out. 
Honor thy father and thy mother and thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Obedience is key. Obey thy mother and thy father. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. That means don't be lying. Telling lies. Satan is the creator of lies. God don't know nothing about that. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Thou shalt not, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. That means don't be looking over there at your neighbor talking about, I want that. I want that woman. She bad. I want that car he got. I want, I want that garden he got over there. And plotting. Plotting. Covenant is plotting on the next person. Covetness. And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings, but that would be the end of the Ten Commandments. So that's the end of that. <clears throat> so, in saying that, it's dangerous to be a double-minded man. You have to walk in God's judgments. And be the person that he created you to be. And your life will be happier. And your eternal life is going to be wonderful. The promises and the gifts that God has for our lives are magnificent. Um, I have been touching on a few subjects in the book of Enoch. You know, a lot of people are like, if it's not in the Bible, I'm not reading it. But it's uh, a lot of beautiful descriptions. <clears throat> uh, of what paradise is and where his children will live for eternity. So thank you for your time and have a great day. Bye-bye.